most welcome to the sixth video of my lecture series on visual complex analysis. So far, we have discussed the geometry of complex plane and complex numbers. If you have not watched those videos, I'd recommend you to watch those videos before you start watching this one. The link is in the description below. In this video, we shall discuss about functions of one complex variable. Before that, let us recollect what we mean by a function of a real variable. A function of a real variable f from the domain set A to the co-domain set B is a rule that assigns to each element of the set A exactly one element of the set B. So it is a rule that assigned to each element of this set A exactly one element of this set B. We can say this element as X. If I say this element as X and this element is Y, we denote this as Y is equal to F of AX and this assignment Whatever rule is doing this assignment, that rule is known as f. For example, uh, if we if we write f x equal to x square, if we write f x equal to x square, then we know that this f is a function from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers. Here, the domain is the set of real numbers. Codomain is the set of real numbers for this function. Although the range will be, as you know, the set of positive real numbers. So this is my function and, and, and as for the rule that I was saying, as for the assignment that I was saying, pretty simple, we know 1 is assigned to 1, 2 is assigned to 4, minus 3 is assigned to say 9, minus 3 is assigned to 9. In this way, we can find out the assignments. If we try to graph it, if we graph it, then the graph will be, then the graph will be, Something like this. You know that my drawing is pretty poor, my drawing skill is pretty poor, so the graph will be something like this. Y to the fx equal to x bar. So this is my graph, and if we graph it, we'll get this. So this is about what is our understanding of functions of real variable. Now see, here both your domain and codomain are a uh, set of real numbers. That means both your domain and codomain can be plotted in the real lines. So both your codomain and domain are real lines, either the whole real line or a segment of the real line. That means both the codomain and domain are one dimensional. As a result, you can plot a function of one real variable in a two dimensional space because both are one dimensional. So you need a two dimensional uh, a system to plot a function of one real variable and that is what we call the two dimensional euclidean system now uh, let us let us think how we can define a function of a complex variable now a function of one complex variable can be defined analogously where the domain and codomain both will be subset of the set of complex numbers. In this case, in the earlier case, both are subset of the set of real numbers. Now here, both will be the subset of the set of complex numbers. Pretty simple. For example, uh, 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 we can consider like the previous case. Uh, here my function was fx equal to x square. Now, like this, I'm now considering my function as f z is equals to z square, where the z is a complex number. Now, the issue is how we can graph it. Can we graph it like the earlier case? Can we graph it like the earlier case? Hold on, think of it. In the earlier case, both your domain and codomain had been real lines. So you, you, you have plotted in the two-dimensional 
uh, Euclidean plane very, uh, very, very easily. Uh, uh, what, uh, whatever was your function f x equal to x square, you have plotted very easily in this two-dimensional Euclidean plane. Now, if you think that you will plot it analogously, you will face a problem. The problem is now your domain is the set of complex numbers. And the codomain set is also the set of complex numbers. That means if I call this as x-axis, as conventionally we call it as x-axis, this is y-axis. That means your this x-axis or the domain axis should be replaced by the complex plane. That means this line should be replaced by a two-dimensional plane. And the vertical axis, that is y-axis or another real line, that also needs to be replaced by the complex plane because your codomain here is the set of complex numbers. So that also needs to be replaced by the complex plane. So you in both the places, you have to replace this one-dimensional lines by two-dimensional complex plane. That means the structure that you, if you try to plot analogously, the structure that you will get will be four-dimensional. Domain two-dimensional, codomain two-dimensional. So you will get four-dimensional. Now this is too complicated to visualize in this way and cannot be drawn. At least I cannot draw in this analogous way. Then what is the alternative? So then how we will graph this complex function, this function of a complex variable? The idea is instead of having one access system, we will consider two complex planes, one representing the domain, another representing the co-domain. Let us have two complex planes. So these are my two complex planes. If I consider my function as say w equals to f of z, that means this I'm saying my domain plane or the z plane, and this I am saying my W plane or the co-domain plane. And this function f will take elements from the domain set or from the domain plane to the co-domain plane. Now, let this z is equals to, uh, z is an arbitrary complex number. So, let z is equal to r e to the power i theta, the polar form I have taken. So let z equals to r e to the path i theta. That means we know that uh, this z will lie on a circle of radius r. This z is a variable point on a circle of radius r. So now let us take our circle of radius r. So this is my circle of radius r. So uh, my z lies on this circle. Now since z equals to r e to the power i theta, z square will be equals to r square e to the power i into 2 theta. So z square now will lie on a circle of radius r square as we can see here. Now this, uh, deep, uh, this r square may be greater than r, may be less than r depending on what is your value of r for z. So uh, let us take an arbitrary circle of radius r square. For the sake of discussion, let us consider this is my circle of radius r square. So whenever z lie on this circle of radius r in z plane, w or z square will lie on this circle of radius r square in uh, uh, w plane. If you further notice, you can see that your argument for, a, for any complex number z, in z plane if the argument is theta, then the argument of the image of the same complex number under f will be 2 theta. So the argument will get doubled. So if z lies in a circle of radius r, z square will lie on a circle of radius r square and the argument will get doubled. Now if we keep these things in our mind, we can plot uh, 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 complex numbers and their images. For example, if I consider this particular complex number, say, sorry, say I'm considering this particular complex number. Here the argument is 0. So the image of this particular complex number will be that complex number which lies on, on the circle of radius r squared with argument double of zero. Double of zero is zero. So uh, uh, considering that, that means this will be my image of that point. Now if I consider another point, say if I consider this particular point, here the argument is 
pi by 2. So here the image will be the uh, in in the in the image the argument will get doubled that is the argument will become pi so the image of that point will be this one if i consider another point say if i consider this particular point the green one here the argument is pi and we know in the image uh, plane or in w plane the argument gets doubled so here the argument will become 2 pi that means okay it will overlap with the pink point so for the pink and green point in z plane the image in w plane will be same that is the pink and green point which are overlapping so in this way we can find out uh, image of or we can visualize image of any point in z plane under this um, uh, under this function f now if we think about a region Suppose I'm considering this particular region. Say I'm considering this particular region. Can you tell me what will be the image of this particular region in W plane? Can you guess? Can you calculate? Think about the aspect that your argument will get doubled. So if I consider this particular point, the argument of this point will get doubled. That means this particular point will somehow will be something somewhere like this. And consequently, the image in a similar way, if I consider doubling the argument for all other points in the place, so the image will be something like this. So the region which you can see in the left side will be mapped to the to the region which you can see in the right side so this is how you can visualize you can visualize uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the image of image of any point or any region of a z plane in w plane if i if i say if i name this region as as say r then i can say this will be my f of r the image f of r sorry this will be my f of r so uh, this will be the image of this region under f so this is how we can we can we can visualize uh, a, a complex functions now can you tell me uh, can you tell me if this is the case can you tell me what will be how we can visualize or how we can visualize f of z is equal to say z square plus i can you tell me how we can visualize this this is how we can visualize f z equals to z square so here it is f z equals to z square so you can visualize f z equals to z square in this way can you tell me how we will visualize f z equals to z square plus i okay pretty simple here i will consider this as a composition of two functions this f let us consider let gz gz is equal to z square and hz is equals to z plus i then can you tell me how we can write f in terms of g and h then i can write f z is equals to h of gz that means fz that means i can say that that means this f is actually equal equivalent to h compose g so uh, this is how can see or how this is how i can i can interpret this function fz now considering this if i if i considering this interpretation if i try to visualize then i will require actually three planes i'll require three planes one for this domain z one for the image of z under g and one for the image of gz under h let these are my three planes now uh, say z is equal to say z is equal to in a similar way say z is equal to 
r e to the power i theta. So z will lie on a circle of radius r. Let us take a circle of radius r. Let this be my circle of radius r. Then suddenly z square. If I then then under under this function z uh, under this function g under this function g, this z will move to z square. That means under this function g, this circle will uh, uh, move to a circle of radius r square because z square will be z square will be r square e to the power i into two theta. So this. Under this uh, 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 function g, z will uh, move to z square. That means the circle of radius r will move to a circle of radius r square. Okay, fine. Let us have a circle of radius r square. Let this be my circle of radius r square. Now it is not mandatory that a circle of radius r square has to be greater than the circle of radius r. That will actually depend on the value of r. But for the sake of discussion, I have. Taken this as as a, as an arbitrary case. This as an example. So uh, this can be, if I think this as my circle of radius r square, that means for a particular for a particular uh, point on this circle in z plane, for a particular point on this circle in z plane of radius r, circle of radius r, under G, that point will be mapped. To a point on this circle of radius r square, and the argument will get argument will get doubled. Fine. Now under h, under the influence of the function h, what will happen? Under the influence of h, what will happen? H is h is defined as z plus i. That means what will happen? This circle will shift its center from origin to the point i comma zero you know that in complex plane or in argon plane if we consider the axis this is my real axis this is my imaginary axis this is my real axis this is my imaginary axis and here uh, my points are one two three in this way and here my points are i two i three i in this way so this circle will shift its center from origin that is 0 0 to this i comma 0 that is as per the definition of this mapping so let us shift this circle a bit so if we do that we will get something like this we will get something like this so any point which is lying on the circle of radius r will first due to the effect of g will be mapped to another point of the circle of radius r square where the argument will get doubled and then under the influence of h the same point will be mapped to a corresponding point with the same uh, with the same argument and the radius of the circle will also be same only the center of that circle where it will be mapped at last will be shifted from origin to the point i comma zero that means to the point i if we think in that way okay so 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 if we consider that so if we consider that uh, then uh, say say for example let us consider a particular region so if we consider this particular region say if i consider this particular region if I consider this particular region, so can you tell me uh, under the under the effect of G where this particular region will be mapped? Absolutely, the argument will get doubled, so that line will look something like this. So, yeah, something like this. So that region will be under the effect of G will be mapped to a region something like this, maybe a region like this. And under the effect of H, where it will where it will move, it will under the effect of H, it will further move to a region. Everything will remain same. Only the center will shift from origin to this I comma zero. That means the region will shift like this. So 
uh, the circle will shift like this nothing will change the region will remain intact only the circle will take a shift the origin will shift from uh, the center will shift from origin to i0 so uh, that means this will happen under the effect of h now if we consider if that means under if this kind of a region will move to this kind of a will get mapped to this kind of region so i can say under the effect of f that is equivalent to h compose g the this region will be mapped to this particular region so this is how you can you can visualize uh, visualize a bit more more difficult uh, uh, functions uh, of complex variables you can think them as a composition of some simple functions and you can visualize them in this way so this is how one can visualize a function of a complex variable using polar form now if we analyze the same thing using rectangular form let us see what we get see for example for example if we consider here for example if we consider here z is equals to x plus i y that means in coordinate in ordered pair notation if i consider z as an ordered pair of two real variables x and y here x and y both sorry here x and y both are real numbers so if we consider z to be this then uh, if z will be what will be fz okay let us take the previous example if i consider if z as equals to z square then if z equals to x plus y if z can be written as x plus i y sorry if z is x plus i y x plus i y whole square if we expand the whole square it will be x square minus y square plus i into twice x y so this you can consider you can see that this is again a real valued function of two real variables x and y and if you consider the multiple of i also that is also a real valued function of two real variables x and y let us denote them by uxy and vxy so whenever z is in this form you can understand that uh, if z can also be written in this form so i can now say if z is equal to x plus i y where uh, x y belongs to the set of real numbers or x y both are real then if z the function of z is actually can be written or can be written as u x y plus i into v x y now what is uh, u and v u and v are two arbitrary function of the variables x and y or in 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 ordered pair notation we can write this as we can write this as equivalent to the ordered pair u x y comma v x y so in this way how we can define a complex function we can we can say that if z as we defined a complex number as an ordered pair of two real numbers x and y or a complex variable as an ordered pair of two real variables x and y which satisfies the rules of addition and multiplication as defined as we have defined already if we define a complex variable in that way then the function then a function of that complex variable will be ordered pair will be an ordered pair of two arbitrary function of the same real variables so whenever z is whenever z is written as x plus i y or an ordered pair x y a function of z can be written as u x y plus i v x y or an ordered pair u x y comma v x y what is u and v that will exactly depend on what is your form of the function in this case for fz equals to z square your u is x square minus y square and v v is 2xy so that is how we can uh, see uh, uh, complex functions if we consider the rectangular form now this perspective will not be very helpful in graphing fz 
but this will be extremely useful in developing the theory further. We will use this lots of times actually in building up other theories, solving problems, etc. This will be most effective. But if you want to visualize, then I would prefer you to, I prefer you should uh, look at the thing from the perspective of polar form. Now a problem for you to solve. The problem is a pretty simple one. Uh, can you tell me if fz is equal to hyperbolic cosine z, then how you will express fz, then how you will express fz as qxy plus i into vxy as we did earlier. So the question is, if fz equals to hyperbolic cosine z, then express fz as uxy plus i into vxy. Uh, I'm leaving this problem for you to solve. If you have any difficulty in understanding hyperbolic cosine z or hyperbolic function, uh, then you can refer to my video on hyperbolic functions whose link you can see above. So I expect you will solve this problem and you will let me know the answer in the, in the comment section below. I will wait eagerly to get the answer from you people. So that's it for this video. See you in the next video. Take care.